What does it really take to throw the U.S. out, especially from African nations? The U.S. has exerted influence and dominated African nations for years. But African nations have had enough. They are done with dominance-oriented partnerships. They want mutual respect. And this will all be possible by letting the U.S. go and allowing other nations like Russia in. So Niger decided to expel 1,000 U.S. military personnel to protect its sovereignty and to strike a deal with Russia. But will all this be worth it? Let's find out. Russian President Vladimir Putin has secured a significant deal with an African nation, shaking the grounds of long-standing U.S. influence in the region. This pact's repercussions extend far beyond diplomatic circles, with implications for global security and America's strategic interests. Niger has also expelled 1,000 U.S. military personnel from Niger. But what factors led to this? The expulsion of over 1,000 U.S. military personnel from Niger stemmed from a series of events that culminated in strained relations between the U.S. and Nigerian authorities. This is the termination of a crucial military agreement between the two nations, which had previously allowed the United States to maintain a significant presence in Niger for counterterrorism operations. This expulsion followed the breakdown of a 10-year deal between the U.S. and Niger, which was considered essential for U.S. troops' operations and counterterror efforts. The sudden termination of this agreement dealt a severe blow to American influence in Niger and jeopardized ongoing efforts to combat extremism in the region. Furthermore, the growing influence of Russian proxies, such as the Wagner Group, in Niger and other African nations makes the West anxious. This increasing presence of foreign entities has contributed to Nigerian authorities reassessing their relationship with the United States and aligning more closely with Russia, as evidenced by the subsequent deal struck between Putin and Niger. But how does Russia's focus on resource-rich African nations threaten U.S. interests? Russia's focus on resource-rich African nations poses a multifaceted threat to U.S. interests, as outlined in the transcript. Firstly, Russia's strategic interest in African nations rich in valuable natural resources, such as uranium in Niger, directly undermines U.S. national security objectives. Control over these resources bolsters Russia's economic power and potentially compromises U.S. access to vital defense and energy production materials. Moreover, Russia's expanding presence in Africa, driven by its pursuit of natural resources, allows Moscow to exert greater geopolitical influence. By establishing economic and military ties with African nations, Russia seeks to challenge U.S. hegemony and expand its sphere of influence, potentially eroding American alliances and partnerships. Additionally, Russia's engagement with African nations extends beyond economic interests, encompassing security cooperation and support for dictatorial regimes. This alignment with authoritarian governments undermines efforts to promote democracy, human rights, and stability, core tenets of U.S. foreign policy. Furthermore, the presence of Russian proxies like the Wagner Group in resource-rich African nations poses a direct security threat to U.S. interests. These mercenaries, operating under the guise of private military contractors, can destabilize fragile regions, exacerbate conflicts, and undermine U.S.-led efforts to combat terrorism and extremism. Here, an important group is the Wagner Group. So, what role does the Wagner Group play in Russia's African initiatives? And how does it operate within African nations? Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. The Wagner Group is pivotal in Russia's African initiatives operating as a covert and formidable tool for advancing Moscow's interests on the continent. The Wagner Group is a proxy army, providing security services and military support to autocratic regimes aligned with Russian interests. Within African nations, the Wagner Group operates discreetly, often under the guise of private military contractors or security consultants. This allows them to circumvent international scrutiny while engaging in activities that serve Russia's strategic objectives. The group's operations encompass a range of activities. First, 
the security services. The Wagner Group offers security services to autocratic governments, protecting key infrastructure, resources, and political figures. This allows Russia to cultivate close ties with ruling regimes and influence governance structures. Second, military support. Besides security services, the Wagner Group provides military support to allied regimes, including training, advisory services, and combat operations. This assistance strengthens the capabilities of friendly forces and enhances Russia's leverage in regional conflicts. Then, resource exploitation. The Wagner Group is often involved in resource extraction activities, particularly in mineral-rich African nations. The group helps advance Russia's economic interests while undermining Western influence in key sectors by securing access to valuable resources such as uranium, gold, and oil. Then, the counterterrorism operations. While ostensibly focused on security and stability, the Wagner Group's operations in Africa also counter perceived threats to Russian interests, including terrorism and extremism. This allows Moscow to position itself as a reliable partner in combating security challenges, thereby gaining favor with African governments. Here comes an important question. Why is Russia trying to replace the U.S.? This all started with tension between Russia and the U.S. And things got worse under Trump. But in what ways did former President Trump's diplomacy with Putin fail to achieve the desired outcomes? Former President Trump's diplomacy with Putin failed to achieve the desired outcomes in several ways. Trump's approach to diplomacy with Putin emphasized personal rapport and relationship building. However, this reliance on interpersonal dynamics proved insufficient in addressing substantive policy differences and effectively advancing U.S. interests. Trump's affinity for Putin often overshadowed broader strategic considerations and U.S. national interests. By prioritizing a personal relationship with Putin over strategic alignment, Trump's diplomacy risked undermining established foreign policy goals and principles. Trump's engagement with Putin sometimes contradicted established U.S. foreign policy positions, causing confusion and concern among traditional allies and partners. This inconsistency eroded confidence in American leadership and contributed to perceptions of wavering commitment to international norms and alliances. Despite Trump's belief in his ability to negotiate with Putin, the former president's diplomacy did not always translate into tangible concessions or favorable outcomes for the United States. Putin, a wise and experienced leader, often capitalized on Trump's eagerness for personal rapport to advance Russian interests without making significant concessions in return. Trump's focus on personal diplomacy with Putin overlooked broader systemic issues in U.S.-Russia relations including geopolitical rivalries, security concerns, and ideological differences. By neglecting these underlying issues, Trump's approach failed to lay the groundwork for sustainable cooperation or conflict resolution. Trump also called Putin aggressive, making things even worse. Former President Trump's assertion that Putin responds to strength reflects a misunderstanding of Putin's motives and the dynamics of the U.S.-Russia relations. This statement overlooks several key factors that shape Putin's behavior and geopolitical objectives. Putin's leadership style is characterized by authoritarianism and a penchant for projecting strength. However, this does not imply that he responds exclusively to displays of force or aggression. Instead, Putin's actions are driven by a combination of strategic calculation, pragmatism, and a desire to maintain Russia's influence on the global stage. Broader geopolitical realities and power dynamics influence Putin's response to perceived strength. While he may respect assertive leaders, Putin's decisions are guided primarily by Russia's national interests, strategic objectives, and risk and opportunity assessments. Putin's motivations extend beyond a simplistic notion of strength and weakness. Russia's foreign policy goals encompass many objectives, including territorial expansion, regional influence, economic development, and regime stability. Putin's responses are tailored to advance these multifaceted interests rather than simply reacting to displays of strength from other leaders. Putin's approach to international relations is characterized by pragmatism and opportunism, 
While he may seek to assert Russia's power and influence, Putin also recognizes the importance of diplomacy, negotiation, and strategic partnerships in achieving his goals. Thus, his response to foreign leaders is informed by carefully calculating risks and rewards, rather than a reflexive reaction to displays of strength. So on the one hand, Russia's relations with the U.S. worsened, and its alliance with Africa increased. Africa found Russia better than the U.S. For this reason, the U.S. is being replaced. But for Africa, how is Russia better than the U.S.? African nations perceive Russia as less interventionist in their internal affairs than the U.S., which has a history of involvement in regime change and governance issues in the region. Russia's policy of non-interference in domestic affairs appeals to African leaders seeking autonomy and sovereignty. Russia often offers more flexible and less conditional partnerships than the U.S. African nations appreciate the absence of strict conditions attached to Russian aid, investment, or military cooperation, allowing them greater freedom in their decision-making processes. Russia also offers diverse trade and investment opportunities, particularly in the energy and natural resources sectors. African nations with significant oil, gas, or mineral resources find Russia's interest in resource extraction and infrastructure development appealing, providing avenues for economic growth and diversification. Russia's willingness to provide military equipment, training, and support without stringent human rights or governance requirements is attractive to some African countries facing security challenges. Russia's arms sales and military cooperation agreements offer alternatives to reliance on Western suppliers. Some African nations also see engagement with Russia as a means of countering perceived Western dominance or diversifying their international partnerships. By cultivating ties with Russia, African countries can hedge against over-reliance on any single geopolitical actor. Also, Russia has historical and cultural ties with certain African countries, dating back to the Cold War era when it supported liberation movements and provided educational opportunities to African students. These historical connections foster goodwill and facilitate cooperation in various fields. But can the U.S. regain influence in Africa? Will Africa accept someone controlling it now? The traditional paradigm of great power competition where major powers vie for dominance in strategic regions is giving way to a more multipolar world order. Countries like China and Russia and regional powers like Nigeria and South Africa exert significant influence alongside the U.S. in Africa. Reasserting dominance would require navigating complex relationships with multiple actors and balancing competing interests. African nations have increasingly asserted their agency and sovereignty in shaping their destinies, resisting external attempts at dominance or control. The era of colonialism and neocolonialism has left a legacy of mistrust and skepticism towards external powers seeking to impose their will on the continent. African leaders and citizens will likely prioritize partnerships based on mutual respect, equality, and shared interests rather than submission to external domination. Instead of pursuing dominance, the United States can focus on cultivating strong, mutually beneficial partnerships with African nations based on shared values, interests, and priorities. This includes promoting democracy, good governance, economic development, and security cooperation while respecting African agency and sovereignty. The U.S. possesses significant soft power assets, including its cultural appeal, educational opportunities, technological innovation, and humanitarian assistance. Leveraging these soft power tools can enhance America's influence and attractiveness in Africa, fostering goodwill and cooperation with African nations. Engaging multilateral institutions and regional organizations offers opportunities for the U.S. to amplify its influence in Africa and address common challenges collectively. Working through platforms such as the African Union, United Nations, and regional economic communities allows the U.S. to collaborate with African nations on shared priorities while respecting their sovereignty and autonomy. Regaining dominance or influence in Africa is not a short-term work, but requires sustained engagement, investment, and dialogue over the long term. Building trust, 
fostering partnerships and addressing the root causes of instability and underdevelopment are essential for achieving meaningful progress and enduring regional influence. So, what strategies can the United States employ to counter Russian influence in Africa and uphold its interests? The United States should prioritize diplomatic engagement with African nations to strengthen bilateral relations and counter Russian overtures. This includes high-level visits, diplomatic exchanges, and dialogue on shared priorities such as democracy, human rights, and economic development. Investing in economic partnerships and development initiatives in Africa can help bolster U.S. influence and compete with Russia's economic engagement. This includes promoting trade, investment, and development assistance programs that support sustainable growth and infrastructure development. Enhancing security cooperation with African nations is crucial for countering Russian military influence and addressing regional security threats. This includes training, equipment, and support for African security forces to improve their capabilities in combating terrorism, extremism, and other security challenges. The United States should actively promote democratic values, good governance, and human rights in Africa to counter Russian support for authoritarian regimes. This includes supporting civil society organizations, promoting electoral integrity, and advocating for political reforms that strengthen democratic institutions. Engaging multilateral institutions such as the United Nations, the African Union, and regional organizations can amplify U.S. efforts to counter Russian influence and address common challenges in Africa. By working collaboratively with international partners, the United States can leverage collective resources and expertise to advance shared goals. Utilizing information and media campaigns to raise awareness about Russian activities in Africa and promote alternative narratives aligned with U.S. interests can help shape public perceptions and counter Russian propaganda efforts. Also, investing in cultural and educational exchanges can foster people-to-people -people ties between the United States and African nations, building goodwill and understanding while countering Russian influence narratives. Supporting capacity-building initiatives in African countries, particularly in governance, rule of law, and economic diversification, can help strengthen their resilience to external influence and create opportunities for sustainable development. Will Russia let the U.S. exert its influence on Africa again? Given how much benefit Africa gives to Russia, will Russia let Africa go? African nations have agency and sovereignty in shaping their relationships with external powers, including Russia and the U.S. African leaders and citizens prioritize partnerships that offer tangible benefits, respect their sovereignty, and align with their development priorities. Russia's ability to maintain influence in Africa depends on its ability to meet these criteria and foster mutually beneficial relationships. Does Africa deal with partners who care about mutual benefit, showing it is done with colonialism and slavery? Will it ever again fall into that trap? African nations increasingly seek partnerships that offer tangible benefits in economic development, infrastructure investment, technological exchange, and capacity building. By engaging with partners who respect their sovereignty and prioritize mutual benefit, African countries aim to break away from historical patterns of exploitation and dependency. These nations are wary of falling into the trap of neo-colonialism or exploitation by external powers. The memory of past injustices, including colonial exploitation and the transatlantic slave trade, serves as a reminder of the need to guard against predatory practices and uphold national interests. African countries engage with various partners, including traditional Western powers, emerging economies such as China and Russia, regional actors, and international organizations. By diversifying their partnerships, African nations seek to leverage competition among external actors to secure their citizens' best possible terms and outcomes. African nations increasingly assert their sovereignty and agency in shaping their destinies. This includes advocating for fair trade practices, negotiating equitable investment deals, and asserting control over their natural resources. 
by asserting sovereignty and agency, African countries aim to break free from patterns of dependency and exploitation. Lastly, let's understand what mistake is the U.S. made to make Africa hate cooperating with the U.S. The historical legacy of European colonialism, which included the transatlantic slave trade and exploitation of Africa's resources, has shaped perceptions of Western powers, including the U.S. Many African nations view Western countries with suspicion due to past injustices and exploitation. In the past, the U.S. has supported authoritarian regimes in Africa for strategic reasons, prioritizing stability over democratic governance. This has led to resentment among African populations who seek greater political freedoms and human rights. U.S. interventions in African conflicts, such as military interventions or regime change efforts, have sometimes been viewed as infringing on African sovereignty and exacerbating instability. Examples include U.S. involvement in conflicts in Libya, Somalia, and the Sahel region. Some African countries have criticized U.S. economic policies, such as trade agreements or investment practices, for perpetuating economic dependency and hindering local development. Criticisms often center on unequal trade relations, exploitation of natural resources, and lack of investment in infrastructure and human capital. African countries have expressed frustration with the U.S.'s perceived neglect or insufficient attention to addressing pressing development challenges such as poverty, healthcare, education, and infrastructure. Calls for increased aid, investment, and technical assistance often go unheeded or fall short of expectations. Inconsistencies or perceived double standards in U.S. foreign policy, particularly regarding human rights, democracy promotion, and counter-terrorism have led to skepticism and criticism from African nations. Many African countries feel that U.S. policy lacks coherence and is driven by narrow geopolitical interests rather than moral values. So, what would be the benefits of letting the U.S. go? African nations can diversify their diplomatic, economic, and security relationships by reducing reliance on the U.S. as a primary partner, engaging with a broader range of partners, including emerging economies, regional actors, and international organizations, can provide greater flexibility, leverage, and opportunities for cooperation. Reduced dependence on the U.S. can enhance African nations' autonomy and sovereignty in shaping their destinies. African countries can pursue policies and partnerships that align more closely with their interests, priorities, and values by asserting independence and agency in international affairs. Diversifying partnerships beyond the U.S. can facilitate more balanced and inclusive development strategies. African nations can seek investment, technical assistance, and cooperation from various sources, including countries with different economic models, priorities, and expertise, thereby reducing vulnerabilities and promoting sustainable development. Decreased reliance on the U.S. can strengthen African nations' negotiating power in international relations. By diversifying their partnerships and reducing dependency on any single external actor, African countries can negotiate more favorable terms, agreements, and outcomes that better serve their interests and development aspirations. Reducing dependence on the U.S. can encourage greater regional integration and cooperation among African nations. By prioritizing intra-African trade, investment, and collaboration, African countries can harness their collective strengths and resources to address common challenges, promote economic growth, and advance regional stability. Diversifying partnerships and reducing dependency on the U.S can enhance African nations' resilience to external shocks and geopolitical uncertainties. By cultivating self-reliance, diversifying economic ties, and strengthening regional cooperation, African countries can better withstand fluctuations in global markets, political dynamics, and international relations. Also, emphasizing partnerships with countries from the global south, such as China, India, Brazil and Russia 
can facilitate South-South cooperation and exchange of best practices, technologies, and experiences. This can provide valuable opportunities for learning, innovation, and capacity building, tailored to the needs and contexts of African nations. Do you think it is a good decision to let the U.S. go? What benefits do you see Africa having in a few years? Let us know in the comments section. Will this be worth it? Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about, the black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.